You can't teach an old dog new tricks. You've probably heard that saying before, right? We've all heard it before. I think I know what it means. The more we age, the harder it is for us to kind of take up new things. The older we get, the harder it is to accept new things. Well, today's gospel is very much about this idea that as people, sometimes we find it very difficult to accept change. It's been said that in a church there's really one dirty word, and the dirty word is change. <laughs> now, if we're coming up with a title for this morning's gospel uh, th that we just heard, How Not to Be a Follower of Jesus is probably a pretty good title. Because there's three characters in the gospel who approach our Lord, and all of them aren't willing to make the necessary changes in their lives that Christian discipleship demands. The first guy walks up to Jesus, he set his face toward Jerusalem, he's going down to Jerusalem to give his life for all of us, that's what St. Luke is uh, hinting at when he says Jesus has set his face towards Jerusalem. The first guy comes up and he promises to follow Jesus wherever he will go. And Jesus is not exactly uh, flattered by this. He says to the guy, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So this is a warning. Our Lord is, is telling this man, he's warning this man uh, that, that following him might be a little bit more difficult than he has imagined. And he might want to think twice before signing on the dotted line. This man seems excited to follow Jesus, and in a real sense, Jesus is saying back to him, are you sure you want to follow me? Because where I'm going to go, there's going to be some really hard places. Are you sure you want to get into that? The next guy comes along, who also wants to follow Jesus, but he says he'll follow him only after he has buried his father. Now the thing we have to understand about this guy is that his father is not yet dead. His father is living, and so he's in effect saying to Jesus, I'll follow you, but much, much later on when it's a better time, when it's more convenient. Today's just not quite the right time. There are other things I'd like to do first. And Jesus, of course, says to him, let the dead bury their own dead. And this is Jesus' way of saying to him that following him is more important, or it ought to be more important than anything else we might do. And then there's a, a third guy that comes along. Jesus says, come with me. He says, well, I, I want to go say goodbye to everybody first before I take up this new role as a disciple. And Jesus says to him, uh, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And what's the translation of that? Jesus is saying when we follow him, rather than following him with clenched teeth, kind of always uh, upset about all that we've had to give up, always kind of looking over our shoulder, looking back at the old life that we used to have, that's not the kind of thing Jesus wants from his disciples. No regrets, but constantly with a smile on our face, looking forward with joy in our hearts to all that we have gained because we follow the Lord Jesus. So there's three people in today's gospel. Each of them gives us a witness, and each of them reminds us that following Jesus necessarily implies making changes in our lives day after day after day. And in many cases, there's a real sense of urgency that there are changes that every one of us needs to make and we need not to kick the can down the road and we don't need to make them tomorrow. There's a sense of urgency in making those changes today. The underline on all of this, the, the thing that is 
is so highlighted in these three interactions that Jesus has back to back to back is that discipleship just can't be an afterthought. It's not a kind of a part-time activity when we get to it, when we think about it, when it's convenient for us. Following Jesus is not something we do in our spare time. It's not an extracurricular activity. It's got to define who we are. It defines how we live our lives, how we think of ourselves day after day. Now these people who approach Jesus, these three characters in the story, contrast that with the disciples who, who drop everything to follow Jesus. Jesus walks up to them as they're in their boats fishing. He says, follow me. And uh, every single one of the stories, they immediately, they drop their nets and follow him. Or they're at the Matthew, at the tax office, immediately gets up and just goes with Jesus. And so following Jesus is going to demand a response from us. Every single day we have to make decisions in our lives. Are we going to follow or are we not? Are we going to follow when it's hard or are we going to let this one go? And I think one of the lessons we can learn from these back-to-back-to-back -back -back characters is that we must be ready to do whatever it takes to follow the Lord Jesus. In today's first reading, Elisha is called to follow uh, Elijah. And I don't know if you noticed, but, but when he gets the call to be a prophet, he goes and he, he slaughters his oxen, all of his farm tools, he chops up, he makes a fire with the farm tools, he boils the oxen. In other words, he's leaving his old life behind. Those are the things he needed to be a farmer, the oxen and the farming tools, and he's burned them all up. They're all gone. He's sacrificed the old life. He's ready. He's all in for God's call to be a prophet. And that's the kind of thing that is so clear that Jesus is looking for in those who will follow him. Who knows what we might have to give up. And it's going to be different for every single one of us. Some of us yeah, maybe we're like Elijah. We have to make a complete career change in order to follow the Lord. Maybe there's some dramatic situation that presents itself to us, and we've got to make a, a dramatic life decision. Whatever it is, all of us have to make changes day by day in order to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Following the footsteps of Jesus is not an easy thing, and it isn't always convenient. And it always, always, always involves change. Changes to the way we think, changes to the way we behave. Now, the Bible calls these changes to the way we think and the way we behave. It uses words like conversion or repentance, changing your thinking, changing your behavior. And when the Bible talks about conversion or repentance, it repeatedly says to us, there is no better time than the present. And so today's gospel, Jesus challenges these men who approach him to seize the moment He's challenging all of us to do the same. Whatever needs to change in our lives, we'll begin the process for that tomorrow. Begin it today. God is something like a, a doctor. Of course, our Lord has been called the great physician. He wants all of us to change because he wants to ultimately heal us. To heal our wounds and all the self-inflicted wounds in life. Jesus wants to heal those. God knows what's best for us, and he knows that following Jesus in all that we do, in every single situation, is what's best for us. And if we do that, if we can make the changes necessary, and we can day by day do the, the things that God asks us to do, well then our lives will manifest the fruits of
fruits of the Spirit that St. Paul talked about in the second reading from Galatians today. When we don't hesitate to make the changes that we need to when we're followers of Jesus in every single aspect of our lives, then our lives are filled with love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. So the bottom line, the key point, is that change is a non-negotiable for Christian living. There's an old saying that there's no standing still in the Christian life. You're either moving forward or you're sliding back. And we know that God doesn't want us to slide back. He calls us to be holy people, to change for the better day by day. To quote John Henry Newman, to live is to change, and to be perfect is to have changed often. Amen.